welcome to the Birmingham Museum. I'm Donna Cassicelli and I'm here to show you how to decorate the Springerly cookies that we showed you how to bake last week. So if you've been following along with our holiday traditions videos, uh, this is the second one and uh, it's decoration time. Now, in the Victorian era, decorating cookies was a very big deal, uh, from doing scrap art cookies, to painting cookies, to uh, basically just, well, they decorated everything. Um, but Springerly cookie decorating goes back to about the 15th century, about the same time that they were pressed. But because it is so very uh, different than normal cookie decorating, uh, we've had a lot of people who were interested in the video, you know, they've asked me, how do you paint cookies? How do you paint them like you would a canvas and not just like we paint cookies today or decorate cookies today? So I'm going to show you that today. Um, now I've painted a couple uh, to start off with at home. And um, let me get my gloves on. It's very important because you're going to be handling these cookies uh, very, very much. So you want to make sure that they're in good shape for when you give them to your to your visitors or if you're showcasing them because we don't want fingerprints all over our cookies. So what I'm going to do is show you uh, some of the cookies that I've already painted and then we'll get right down to working on one that I have not painted yet. So here's some of the cookies that I just painted. These are the cookies that we pressed out in the last video. And as you can see, you can kind of do just about anything with them. Uh, I like to do a little more um, just straight colors, uh, but I've uh, seen people do these like works of art in a museum. They're just phenomenal. Um, I am not that artistic. Um, however, I do like to decorate these so let's get started. So you saw the close-up cookies. Now what we're going to do is begin painting our cookie here. And the first thing we want to do is have a little bit of royal icing. Uh, royal icing is uh, just powdered sugar, uh, egg white, and a little bit of water. Um, or you can use uh, a cookie um, a cookie frosting from the store. I prefer to use royal icing and what I'll do is I, I like these little cups because I can keep them separated and I'm going to put a little bit of royal icing. As you can see the stuff is pretty thick so we don't we have to kind of create our paint. Um, since this is a pine cone I'm going to add a little bit of brown. I like to use um, cake colors, though I do have some liquid uh, colors, uh, and I do have gold, because gold is very important, we'll come to that a little bit later, and then uh, white icing color. Uh, icing can, it is white, but when you're painting with it, it's not that white, it can almost be translucent, so but if you really want something white on your cookie to paint it, you want to add a little bit of the white. But we're going to go with brown here. And I like to keep all the frosting out of my cake colors. You don't want to put frosting in your cake colors, they'll go bad. So just a little bit of brown and we're gonna swirl that in. And it's still pretty thick because uh, cake coloring doesn't add a lot of moisture. So to get it to a consistency that is like paint, we're going to very slowly add drops of water. So with a little eyedropper or a little thing, we're just gonna add, I like to add usually just one or two drops at the most to begin with. And we'll stir that up. And as you can see, it, it's starting to look, I kind of want it to be about as thin as acrylic paint that you might find at the craft store. Um, when you've got a nice thinner paint, you're going to choose your paintbrush. Now since this acorn uh, has quite a lot of brown, um, I just take a paintbrush. I like to get these uh, plastic ones um, from the craft store uh, that you would use for acrylic. 
And basically you're going to paint this as if you would an ornament uh, on a Christmas tree, like one of those ceramic ornaments. So the idea is to get the frosting or the royal icing uh, in a thin enough uh, liquid that you can paint it like you would just regular acrylic paint. Um, I know it, it seems pretty simple, um, but there you go. Now, after we get the whole pine cone completely covered in the brown, we're going to let this dry because we're going to want to then decorate it. As you can see, you can see the little pine cones starting to develop underneath the frosting. You do not want this thick because you want you want that texture to come out underneath. Okay, so you want you want to see that texture come out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mix more colors. So we're going to start mixing another color. Uh, probably go with green. Um, my daughter who is doing the video pointed out to me that I said acorn first and it's just kind of funny because last week I could not, could not remember the name of pine cone and I kept wanting to call it acorn and now my brain, uh, just, I know it, I know it's a pine cone, um, but my brain for some reason just doesn't want to recognize that word. So I am terribly sorry it is pine cone. <laughs> so now we're going to mix a little bit of green here. And uh, again, nice and thick. It's really thick. So we're going to add that water and uh, smooth it out a bit. Um, and of course, now because I am looking at a different style, we're not going to spread it wide. We kind of want to keep it more controlled. We're going to use a different brush. Uh, to let you know, I did modify some of my brushes um, by cutting them very, very delicately with uh, scissors to put better points on. Um, and you can do this too. So you want to make your tools your tools because the more comfortable you are with your paint brushes, um, the better control and uh, you'll have and the prettier cookies will be. Uh, so let's see how we do uh, the next part of our pine cone. So I have my favorite brush that I cut up. It's probably a little ugly to you, but it's one of my favorites. And just very delicately, we're going to, just like you would, with regular acrylic paint, uh, you're going to paint each one of these pine needles and this is just the base coat unless that's all you want is just plain colors but I do like to add some kind of definition so we will probably add a little bit of red uh, dots to it, maybe some uh, darker green um, center tines, just, you know, have fun with your cookie. That's the whole idea about painting uh, spring early cookies is to have fun with them um, and make them unique. All right, so with Movie Magic, <laughs> we were able to skip ahead and as you can see, I finished filling out the body of our pine cone and now we're going to work uh, so I can show you a little bit on how to do those delicate lines. Uh, first off you want to make sure that the underlying frosting is given a chance to dry. Um, you can use wet frosting on wet frosting if you want to blend um, but if you want kind of like hard edges on top of another frosting you want to make sure that that frosting is dry first. So we're going to um, work on our uh, pine needles now. Okay, so I mixed up some gr darker greens and darker browns so you can take a good look and see how the 
cookie came out with a little bit of blending inside of those ridges and then I just put a nice dark black uh, dark brown blob or dot uh, to kind of give it some more texture uh, with a little bit of darker green now uh, what I want to do is just kind of like run down like this just very delicately again just like you would with acrylic paint you want to uh, make your frosting thin enough that you can uh, definitely paint with it but you still want to leave it, uh, you don't want it too, too thin. If it's too, too watery, uh, it'll just run too. So we're just delicately kind of tracing just the very tops of our pine needles to give it that really cool texture there. Just like that, one at a time. So now that we've got those leaves all finished, or the needles all finished, I like to just, you know, since it's Christmas, add a little few red dots here and there. That's the nice thing about Springerly. Even if there's, it's not on the pattern, these are kind of cookies that you can sort of add your own touch. So I like to add a little, you know, just a little red for the Christmas spirit. So there we go. Now our next step is we're going to do our border with white and gold. And we want to add the gold because a lot of Springer Lick cookies, especially in the past, would have had some type of gold leaf or gold touches. I don't use gold leaf. Uh, that stuff is very difficult to use. Um, and I prefer to get a gold cake paint. You can find them all over the internet or at cake decorating stores. Uh, they're quite wonderful. They add that touch of gold without the difficulty of our uh, gold leaf. Okay, so now we're going to do a white border. And remember what I said about the white. It can be a little translucent uh, unless you want to pipe it on. If you want to get a nice thick one and pipe it on, um, that's great. Uh, but I prefer to, and this is brand new, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, okay, so I prefer to use a brush uh, on some of my borders because some of the borders, uh, like my rooster and chicken here actually have leaves so you can see the texture of the leaves and if you pipe it on you lose that texture we don't want to do that um, but this cake white is very potent so just a drop is all you really need um, to get that border white uh, and just like your regular paint you're going to add that little bit of white to it it is called cake white and then uh, a drop or two and we're going to paint the border white okay so now we're going to add the gold since our uh, border has been uh, painted on and dry um there is a lot of in between time uh, to let things dry. So what I like to do is actually get kind of like a assembly line where I do four or five, maybe six cookies, and I do all the greens on one, all the reds, all the, that way you don't waste the colors and it really allows things to dry because when you're finished with that sixth one, you can go back to the first one and start with the next colors. Um, so that is helpful. I know we're only doing one today for, for the show. So you have the movie magic of not having to sit there and watch things dry. Um, but we have pretty much it all finished and this is going to be the gold touches. Uh, you can do a straight line, you can do little floor de lises I've seen gorgeous work. Um, I am not that talented in painting, so I am just going to do little dots um, it's my favorite go-to and I'm just going to do little dots along the border of the white to kind of add it to uh, just give it a little more fun. Um, and so we're going to add the little gold dots 
And uh, the gold that I use, again, is it's just called, uh, uh, it's cake decoration. You can find it at uh, online um, or in a cake decorating store. Um, and I use very little of it. You do not, it is already pretty liquid, so you do not need to add anything to it. Um, I like to do just a drop or two because it dries really quickly too and I don't like to waste it. So we're going to finish these dots and then I'll show this to you up close. So here's our Christmas cookie all finished with our little gold ring. Um, you can actually do the border however you like. I have some presses that have beautiful bows and all kinds of decoration on the borders. Uh, so, you know, make these your cookies. Um, really show your personality with them. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add this cookie uh, to the other cookies I have finished and to the other cookies that I still have to decorate for uh, Christmas at our house. So here's our Christmas cookie all finished with our little gold ring. Um, you can actually do the border however you like. I have some presses that have beautiful bows and all kinds of decoration on the borders. Uh, so, you know, make these your cookies. Um, really show your personality with them. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to add this cookie uh, to the other cookies I have finished and to the other cookies that I still have to decorate for uh, Christmas at our house. So now that we have finished decorating that cookie, uh, there's a lot more that you can do with these than uh, just eat them on Christmas Day. Um, Twelfth Night was a huge holiday here in Birmingham in the 19th and 20th century, which we'll be covering later on in this series. Um, but you could also take these cookies and with a little bit of royal icing, uh, glue a ribbon on the back and hang them on the tree Christmas Eve uh, as decorations uh, for Santa Claus. Um, that was also a big thing that was done in Victorian time period. So uh, I want to thank you very much for joining us here uh, at Birmingham Museum uh, on how to decorate Springerly. And yes, if you've noticed that some of the cookies have been disappearing out of the bucket, it is because my camera woman uh, has been eating the cookies nonstop. They're that good. <laughs> so try baking some Springerly this Christmas, decorate them up for your holidays, and have a wonderful Birmingham Christmas.